A is for Alcoholic is a program about recovery. My name is John, and I'm an alcoholic. And my name is Jerry, and I'm an alcoholic. Join us as we go through the alphabet of alcoholism one letter at a time. Hey, are you getting still getting lag from me? I know we're going to start the podcast off with this, but I've been watching the videos, and I've been lagging like crazy, So, which is weird because I have a really good internet connection here. So maybe it's my internet connection? I don't know. Am I lagging but, right now? No, you look fine. It's only when I download it does mm. that lag come through. Weird. You look crystal clear. So maybe it's me. Uh, maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's um. It's not maybe, me. It's you. Maybe maybe we'll switch to Zoom next season and and see how that goes. Right. Right. Because I paid tuned, for a folks. Zoom account. Um. But speaking of which, mm-hmm. speaking of Jerry Wagner's lag on YouTube, Ace for Alcoholic has a YouTube channel. Yeah. And um, if you go, you can go watch our our goofy mugs talk about all this business. Right. And yeah. um, if you subscribe there, which you know would make me happy, uh, I also put the episodes out early. <clears throat> so. Yeah. You know how you listen to a podcast and you're like, dang, I wonder what that person looks like, <laughs> and then you see their faces and it doesn't look like, like their oh. voices at all. They look like completely different people than you imagine them. That's we look exactly like you would imagine us to look. That's exactly <laughs> yeah, right. how we, oh, you're like, oh yeah, that's that face. Oh, oh right. that's exactly what I imagined. Uh-huh. Yep. yep. <laughs> no surprises there. It reminds me of um, when I was in high school and I used to listen to KUNV was in Las Vegas and it was the uh-huh. college radio station and it was the fucking coolest. I don't know if you have any radio stations you used to listen to as a kid that were like the coolest, yeah. but this is the kind of shit where I would stay up until three in the morning to listen to the radio on a school night because I love the DJs and I love the music that they played and it really like shaped how I listen oh, yeah. to music and all that kind of stuff, you know, like it really, I'm so grateful that I was able to find these things, but there was a guy, um, and his name is, uh, David. He's, he lives in Las Vegas. He's a lawyer. I think he was like a criminal defense lawyer or maybe he, uh-huh. did, whatever it was, but he had a radio show and, um, he was, he was Sonic Dave, which is where I got the DJ name from. And then consequently, oh, okay. that's where all the nicknames and the ever, all of my handles have been Sonic John. And mm-hmm. I don't really, you know, think about it, you know, because I don't really have anyhow. So I would listen to Sonic Dave in the mm-hmm. middle of the night and I like had this image in my brain and it was not at all. So right. he was the, it, the, the man that I had, the young man that I had in my brain. And then the, the guy who was like, you know, you imagine things like, oh, he has a full head of hair and he's a young guy. And he was he was older, obviously, because I was in high school. But mm-hmm. he was this balding, you know, bearded uh, glasses wearing lawyer. And it right. was like not because he was so wacky and goofy and funny. What kind of music was he playing? He played. Well, I mean, like I used to call top 40. Up, no, it was oh. all it was like late night college radio. So I would hear like the Pixies uh-huh. and I would hear this is like 1991, 92, 93. So yeah, that's where I learned yeah. about like Ween and Fugazi and all kinds of weird stuff. Right. And I used to call him up and request things. Dude, the dude just comes out it like you expect like you'd see those dudes. Like, you you linked me some of my Instagram and I was like, that shit is velvet. Like that dude's got a butter fucking voice, you know, like this DJ with this butter voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he comes out of the booth and he looks like a pack of fucking cigarettes. Like he looks like a half smoked <laughs> pack of Salem's, you know? You're just like, damn, dude. You've got a face for radio. The only <laughs> other one who who looked like their voice was Wolfman Jack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you're like, oh, there's that Hawaiian shirt wearing fucking Pompadour motherfucker. Yeah, that that's it. I don't even know if half our listeners know who Wolfman Jack is. That's all right. Y'all are young. All right. All right. Um or what is it i was gonna burn is the word (laughs) yeah (laughs) um so today uh let's talk about so i've been thinking about this lately and i've I've had a lot of time to to ruminate um with my with my ankle being that the way that it has been and i wanted to talk to you today today is the letter x and it's always hard and we kind of fudge the thing but yeah uh, i wanted to talk about existential dread Oh, Jerry. Red. yeah, it's appropriate. <laughs> and more, I was thinking about, and and so I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, like, what's the opposite? And I was like, so what if we did a show about existential dread and infinite wonder? Oh, 
which sounds yeah, like damn sounds like a fucking harry potter novel dude it sounds like a new age store right next door to like a goth record store dude it does mm-hmm. um but i was trying to think of what is the opposite because you know i mean and so so i was thinking about being sober during this time of existential dread i've been reading a couple different books um one is called bird by bird by Anne lamont and the other one is eat and run by scott jurek mm-hmm. and um I have quotes from both of those. I'm going to read you here in a a bit. But um, so the idea of existential dread is what that that we we are afraid of the uncertainty of our lives and our future and our existence, the way we have been living. Right. And so I feel like this year and I don't know about you, but <laughs> this year has been a fucking beast, right? Yes, yeah, it's and definitely been a beast. It has peeled back a lot of um, the thin veneer of society and the quote-unquote economy, um, the the fragile, uh, the, fra- the Fabergé egg that is American society. That's maybe that's not a good. The, yeah, I don't think fra- Fabergé eggs are fragile, aren't they? Aren't they made? No, of- maybe it's the uh, you know the uh, the shattered glass of a you know Buick <laughs> LeSabre. Skylark of LeSabre. Skylark. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. on the parking lot <clears throat> behind a nail salon. Boom. I don't know. Uncorked so- nails, dude. Where you get wine <laughs> and nails. Uncorked, <laughs> Uncorked nails. Uncorked Is that a- nails. There's a place here in Eugene. I run by it every day. Uncorked nails. Get your nails did and get mom drunk. Nice. Yeah. So so all of these things have opened up. And I've I've also been and in the last four years, I have definitely become more politically minded, mm-hmm. more interested in what's going on. Yeah. Um, I have it's been very difficult for me to put my faith in anyone in politics. Yeah. Like very, very extremely few people. Um, and so it's not really about taking one side or the other for me, um, because one of them seems evil and, and mean, and the other side seems evil and ineffectual. Right. So, so all of these things have come about in the last four years and in the last year, like, holy shit, life is not what I thought it was. And, um, and, uh, you know, we've actually lived in a relatively prosperous and peaceful in human history right if you go back and you look like we have been fraught with plague and with death and depression and life was short and life was shit and it was bish and you fucking did it because that's what you do because that's what we do and um like that's really that really sucks man like i was like oh i was just getting things 2020 was going to be my year and I really thought that yes, like I really yeah, I, I had a, I had a plan and I had a track and I was like, boom, boom, boom. This is, you know, what happened is not what I planned, Jerry. And I'm no. not complaining. <clears throat> I've already gone through that phase of complaint. Yeah. Um, but I was like, oh, and 2020 is almost gone. So and not that that means that anything's going to change because of a, the page on the calendar flips. Right. Exactly. I mean, Wednesday yep. and Thursday, what's the difference, you know? <laughs> Exactly. Just uh, the the structure of our schedules has been so upturned, like a mm-hmm. fucking you know, like a board game, and all the pieces are on the floor, and we're trying to be like trying to put them back in the same squares. Like we can't do it. There's just no way to figure out where everything belongs anymore because ev- everything's changed. Yeah. And so I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do then? Because I don't I don't know I don't know, and I'm freaking out and I'm panicked. And my ankle hurts, and I got the fucking gout, which anybody who has the gout, I'm so sorry. You know, like, <laughs> I don't know how I got it, because you usually get this shit from eating, you know. Whoa, <laughs> eat so fucking shitty. old. It's your, so yeah, old. It's, it's like the old, it's it's just, it's a nightmare, yeah. right? So this life is a I fucking nightmare right now, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And and I was like, well, is it? And one of the things I read in this Scott Jurek book, um, Eat and Run, and, and before... <sighs> I've got a lot of thoughts, and sometimes I feel like this podcast is. I go like, "Hey Jerry, I got these crazy thoughts going around in my head. I don't talk to anybody all week about them." And then I'm like, <laughs> and you just Let me know what you think. I'm just over here nuts. grouchy, like I gotta yeah. move. What do you want? 
<laughs> that's kind of what I feel like sometimes. Nah, but I love but, uh, the end, though. So. Okay. So he says in here, he's talking about ultra running, and we're talking about mm-hmm. running 50 and 100 miles. And, and he says, not all pain is consequential. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. And what I see that to mean is that I don't have to define my whole life and my whole day by, you know, this momentary pain, right? Mm -hmm. And we talk about that in alcoholism with cravings and, you know, we just kind of write it out. It will pass, it will pass, Mm -hmm. it will pass, it will pass. And um, another thing that we talk about in the program is one day at a time. And I think it's an important tool. And I think it is extraordinarily valuable to break things down into the smallest chunks possible and you know even now i don't have like i can't make any plans i don't even know if i'm going to have a job in a week or two if they're going to shut that shit down but if i kind of try to pull out a little bit and i do the opposite of that one day at a time and i imagine well let's just say i'm going to be alive for the next at least the next six years Mm. am i really going to remember that time that my ankle hurt or you know, like the, yeah. the pain, the pain will not be consequential. It'll just be, do I remember the injury from last year or the year before that, or the year before that? Some of right. them I do. I think you might remember the arcing part of it, but not the minutia of it. I, mm-hmm. I see where you're getting that. Yeah. So, so that helped me to kind of like go, oh, okay. So this is just something that happens. It's not a punishment from God. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what my <laughs> like brain likes to go to. singling you out. Just yeah. you. Um, but it's just, it's just some pain that, that hurts. Yeah. And like it's going to go away and you'll yeah. be back to doing whatever you want to do. And, you know, and the whole experiment with me and my eating and my running and the weight that I've gained this last six months, which is mm-hmm. not a lot. Um, but, you know, whatever I can. I know how to I know how to fix that. So right. you've done it once already. I've done it once and you already. Did it significantly too. So it wasn't even like a little bit here. It wasn't like you just shed five little ones, and mm-hmm. five little pounds. And no, it was man. a lot. It, it was, was like, like eighty, seventy five. Yeah, seventy five pounds. pounds. Yeah, that's insane. You know, um, <clears throat> I mean, it's not insane. It's doable, and anybody right. who wants to do it, I believe. Oh uh, yeah, anybody. Can. It just requires a lot of determination and, and yeah. Um, and and just like quitting drinking, it's the same mm-hmm. shit. You just yeah. one day at a time. Just every day, you fuck up one day, you backslide, you you drink again. Well, fuck it. You go right back again the next day and do it again. You know, mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah. So so anyway. So so I've been th- these thoughts have been rolling through my head about existential dread, and, and it's made me feel a little bit better to be like, oh well, maybe this this thing that I'm I'm going through and that we're all going through. Mm-hmm. Um, that it will pass and that, you know, I hear a lot of people are like, this is not going to be over soon. And I'm like, well, I've already done nine months. Yeah. Like I can, what's, you know, what's, what's an, another nine? What's another nine? You know, and, and who, whoever said that life was, you know, we, I just assumed it was going to be this steady kind of thing and that, you know, society was going to function the way that it was always going to function. And there were all these bigger things outside of me and my narrow view that have been going on that have mm-hmm. caused that have eventually caused all this shit right yeah. um and so it's um another one of the uh, quotes was in this book called bird by bird by Anne lamont and it's um it's uh it's about writing but she quotes another um another author in there uh gk cheston it says hope is the power of being cheerful in circumstances we know to be desperate yeah. So desperate doesn't mean futile, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? I mean, right. Yeah. Shit sucks, but it doesn't mean we're gonna die. I mean, we're all gonna right. die, Jerry. You're gonna die. You're right. in the jungle, baby. I am in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> so, so all of that to say, like, I don't know. All these little pieces came together, and I was like, the existential dread, and is there a way that in the middle of living in this fucking nightmare of a pandemic and the Mm -hmm. crumbling society and the capitalist monster that seems to want to fucking eat my life. Mm -hmm. Um, Can I find some sort of infinite wonder? Can I, can I be happy? Can I be content? And I'm just wondering if you have an answer for me. No, (laughs) no, he'll never be happy again. Embrace it. There you go. You know what it is, is I think when we quit drinking, um, 
we were afraid to stop drinking because every time we would peek out into the vacuum of it all, the idea of not having that alcohol there as like a as a safety net or a seatbelt was really existential, right? Really scary. It was like, mm-hmm. what am I? There's no purpose here. And then we quit drinking, right? And then we start like, eat, and then we look at our own personal habits and we start looking at the vacuum outside of that. And I'm like, wait, I'm going to have to start regimenting the way I do things and really being conscious, like being uh, mindful of my actions, mm-hmm. I'm like not being fucking mindful enough. Now I got to think about my health. So then we do that. And then, we've set everything in little boxes and like little schedules, right? You go to work, you get up like every day. My routine was the same. And so now I've had to adjust the routine. What I think living through this pandemic has taught me is that I I looked outside of it and saw the vacuum and I was like, nothing fucking makes sense. Like nothing matters in its own way. Certain things matter, but they matter to me because they affect me. Mm -hmm. they affect the people around me too. I don't want this to sound like this selfish self-centered thing because I know that my actions reverberate out towards everybody around me. You know, I've learned that as an active alcoholic, you know, but I also realized that like at the end of the day, I live this like little tiny life. You know what I mean? And the people around me love me and they'll miss me and I'll miss them. But at the same point, I, I don't know, man. I got a lot of like, who gives, who fucking cares? Like I got a lot of that, but not in a negative way. It's just mm-hmm. more like freeing. It's freeing. Like I have no power. I got no, I got, I got, I'm powerless. That, I remember sharing that at a meeting once. Like, yo, I, I feel like I have power when I admit I have no power, you know? And it's not like a Buddhist mind game. It's like, wow, I've actually taken control of my destiny in a sense because I'm aware that I have no destiny. I don't know if that makes sense. That's the way I look at it, right? If there's no real major stakes in the fucking thing, then what the fuck am I over here, you know, crying and pissing in a circle? Like, it just doesn't fucking matter. It does do... But see, I also want to put the caveat that it does. Like, the things I do affect you. They affect my wife, my daughter, my family. But also, at the end of the day, it's not like there's a big checklist where they're like, well, did you work hard? Did you make enough money? Did you make sure that you did all the things you needed to do before you went to work every day? You know, that's why I was like, man, I'm not going to fucking go back to tattooing for a little while. Like, I'm just done with that. Like, I'm just done with that because that was what I had to do to stay alive. And then I realized, oh, I don't really have to do that. Um, I don't I don't know, man. I don't know what we do with any of it, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, I, that's I, all I know. This, nothing fucking <laughs> matters. Turn so, off the podcast. Take your clothes off. Go outside. <laughs> show I everybody. Think, right? Yeah, I think so. It reminds me of one thing. So, do you remember? Do you remember the movie Meatballs with yeah. Bill Murray? It's my so, mantra. That I know exactly so, okay. what you're gonna say, but please explain it. No, you explain it. So, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, um, you don't even have to watch the whole movie. Pause the podcast. Go to YouTube. And just uh, type in search. It just doesn't matter. Meatballs, Bill Murray. Yeah. So, great. so it's this really beautiful moment of uh, he's the camp counselor, and he's kind of a fucking slacker himself, uh-huh. kind of a schlub. But right. um, schlub. so he's he's in the. <laughs> I like that. I like that. He's a real schlub. He's kind of a gold bricker. He's a real gold bricker. <laughs> um. So. He's got the he's got the camp of misfits and losers and geeks and nerds and they've got what are they gonna do? What's the the team? They're gonna play a softball game or something. That's right. I think. They're gonna play some sort of sports against the other camp across the pond. That's all full of the jocks and they're gonna they're gonna murder them and 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 Bill Murray starts to go around the room and he starts he starts poking at everybody's foibles and like telling them why. They're probably going to lose yeah. and what, what their problems are. And he goes, but it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And he starts to get them all to chant it. It mm-hmm. just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter over and over and over yeah. into this mm-hmm. huge crescendo. And I'm getting kind of like I get a little tingle because it's like right. this really powerful, free, beautiful dude. moment. It's yeah. free. It's, it's free. free. Yeah. So that's what you're that's what you're finding in this, right? This free to moment. an extent, yeah. But I also don't want to sound like I'm coming from this privileged space where I'm like, I got it figured out, you know, like you don't, you know, it's just the way I look at it. So I of course my my circumstances are different than yours because like the thing that you brings you joy though, like you're kind of being you're prohibiting yourself from doing so that you can um recover from your leg and everything. So you're like, fuck, I lost this thing. 
what else am I going to do? When, when I think, and I'm not here to analyze you, but I think, you know, like you sit down and you go, well, I compromise and I figure out another thing that may not bring me as much joy, but will still pass time until I can do the other thing I want to mm-hmm. do. And yeah. like, I can make suggestions, but you, you already kind of know, like I earlier before we were recording, I was like, I don't know, maybe hike or something, try to do low impact or right. try to, I don't even know if running a mile as fast as you can will help. That might actually put more fucking impact on your joints and on your foot. But like, it's just those things you got to do, right? Like it, it rains a lot here and it's cold and it sucks. And there are days where I don't run and I get bummed out because I'm like, fuck, I can't run because it's raining and I can't lift weights because I lifted weights yesterday and I need a recovery day. So I try to find another thing to do. Do you know what I mean? That'll keep me occupied or, or at least help me. I don't know. I try to I dance. Is that weird? Like to get no? my steps in, like I'll put on music and dance around the kitchen and like make food. What do you, LCD put, what do you put on? System. What do you listen? Yeah. LCD, yeah. Yeah. Dan- dance yourself clean by LCD sound system is the fucking cut, dude. Mm. I've been getting into some weird like British punk rock lately, though, like newer British or European, like the idols. You ever listen to idols? No. They're no. like British punk rock. And then there's another band called Viagra Boys from Sweden. <laughs> They're stupid. fucking <laughs> rad, dude. They're hilarious. It is so stupid. But so I'll put on like punk rock and dance to it, or I'll put on like LCD sound system and dance to it, or I'm fucking Michael Jackson or Prince. Like the other day, I mm-hmm. raked and just danced to Prince in the backyard in the cold because I knew I couldn't run, you know? So I do want to say one thing about that. Well, a couple mm-hmm. things. It's beautiful. It's great. Yes, I think dancing is and should be a part of, you know, I, I think it's important. Right. Um, it's just, it's just a way to just expel energy, right? right. That you, that's get, gets pent up. You get them steps, um, dog. You get them, get steps. them steps. But, um, shit, what else was I going to say to you, Jerry? Oh man, I just lost it. Um, what were you talking about? You LCD said dancing? sound system, punk LCD. rock and dancing and making compromises as to when you can't do the yeah. thing you really want to do and how I dance the cumbia music too. Cause maybe yeah. that shit. Oh, oh yeah. freeing that it's freeing yes, for you. Freeing, yeah. And one of the things that you have said in the past is that when there's a problem, you go like, here you go, I can't handle this problem. Here you go, God, or here you go, bear, or here you go, higher power. Mm-hmm. And then I don't have to think about it. Right. I, I hate think that that about shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that is, that is a great thing to kind of just go, oh, I can't, I can't handle this on my own. Even if I wanted to, I don't have the capacity. I don't have the strength. I don't mm-hmm. have the knowledge. I don't have the skills. So, here you go, right? And then show me what I can, um, show me what I can accomplish and what I right. can, um, fix. Right. What I can't deal with. It'll come to you or well. Just do mm-hmm. when you do your little writing. Your little. I don't mean that condescendingly. When you do your, when you do your little writing, John. You know, mm-hmm. ask ask your, just give it up. Be like, hey, yo, Mountain Mama, or whatever your higher power is. Be like, yo, just take my foot. I don't want it. You can have my foot. I'm going to fucking eat some peaches or whatever, you know, and see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> because funny. I was, I was, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I also hear the language where you're like, you say like, it'll show, it'll show it to you or you'll figure, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't believe there's like mental force out there that will show me and it'd be like, here you go in, in, in um, exchange for this issue you're having, but more like it appears eventually. Like it, it's like solving a math problem. It all clicks in, you know? Sure. But I mean, yeah, that's great. If that's if I mean, that's, that's how you see me. it, it doesn't have yeah. to be, it doesn't have to be, you know, I don't necessarily, I mean, I guess I do just because it makes it easier. Lord, please give hey, me this, whatever that, that. works for you. Mountain mama. It's, Mountain I think mama. yours is Mount mama. It's Jerry <laughs> Garcia's fucking one of his baby mamas. That's your higher power, I think. But maybe, maybe, <laughs> no, it, <sighs> baby mama, Mountain mama. Uh, and that's what is that from? Is that from uh, uh, uh country John Rose. Denver? Yeah. yeah. Maybe instead of saying God release it, but you're right. You go okay. Well, I'm just not going. I'm going to free up mental space yeah. so that I can look at the problem from a different perspective, or that's not look it at is. it at all. Mm-hmm. That's and it. Then you know, go for my walk or go for a run or whatever, and um. And then it will appear, or at least I will have some time away from the anguish of the problem and be able to look at it objectively and create a solution <clears throat> that will bring me to a better place in my life, right? That's so, it. Or, 
That's a breakthrough right there, man. Because you change it once you change the perspective, <laughs> the problem seems less surmountable. Even for me, it's a breakthrough because I'm like, maybe that's what the whole idea of surrender is and giving quote unquote, as they say in the program, giving it up to God. Is that you just put it down on the ground or drop it and then you can walk away from it, turn around and look back and go, Oh, it wasn't that big. I never realized yeah. it wasn't that big in the first place. It just seems so big to me because I'm in it. Like a cut inside your mouth, you know, mm -hmm. or a when they pull a tooth and it just seems enormous, but it's smaller than a marble. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Man. I remember the other thing I wanted to say to you was, um, and I know you're, you're, you're moving. And so you won't yeah. be around the rain, uh, uh, as much nearly in Arizona as you are at Oregon, mm -hmm. but running in the rain is awesome. And if you have warm, been, since spring yeah. rain, it's been great. I had a moment me running spring rain, listening to fucking Mac a Macklemore song, and I just was so overcome with emotion, dude. I was like crying in the rain, running my ass off. But that winter rain. Getting, oh, dude, it's a bitch. It's forty five degrees out, and like you layer up, so then you're just sweating through all the layers, you know. Yes. And they're always like, "Well, dress dress like you know you're gonna raise yourself by ten degrees," but fu it's fucking raining. So I'm like, "Well, I can't just wear a sweatshirt and go out there. I'm just gonna come home with pneumonia." <laughs> But anyway, those are just dumb complaints because I'll find yeah. the time to run. Yeah, it was like 35 the other day and just the ground was frozen and I was still out there running. It hurts your lungs, but at least it was mm -hmm. dry. You know, just go it's shirtless. Funny. Just shirtless, just <laughs> nips, just blasted. Just, <laughs> oh, Jerry listened to the podcast. He got naked and free mm -hmm. on the fucking Rexius running trail. Mm -hmm. But I'll be in Arizona. It'll be 110 and I'm going to try to run. You know what I mean? It's just you trade one thing for another. There will always be, there will always be a problem. And then sometimes you have to sit and realize, oh shit, there's no problem. And I don't necessarily feel good or bad. There's just no problem. And that's when I find myself my most content. Mm -hmm. If I don't feel good or bad, I'm just here. I don't have to pee. I don't have a headache. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to pay a bill. Like, I'm just here. I'm just here watching Mank. Have you seen that movie Mank yet? Came out on Netflix? No. David Fincher, Gary Oldman, I suggest you watch it. It's about a- Mank. Uh, yeah, it's about uh, Mankiewicz, the guy who wrote, uh, uh, co-wrote um, Citizen Kane. Mm. And it's really good. It's a Fincher movie with, like I said, with Gary Oldman playing this Mankiewicz character who's a functioning, barely functioning alcoholic. It's really great, though. It, it's full of wordplay. It's a John movie. Like I was watching this mm -hmm. going, John would love this. It's way full of wordplay. The guy is really smart, really well-read. He's a writer. But anyway... Um, that's really besides the point. I guess I just made you a movie suggestion in the podcast, but it's just when I am a nerd and there's nothing going on, when I'm just a clear glass of water, I feel great. Like I'm like, this is it right here, you know? Then the highs become better, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. The running high or the high of watching my daughter do something amazing or just killing, ki kicking it with my chilling. I was going to mix kicking and chilling, turning it into chilling. Chillin'. Killing it with my wife. We're just straight killing it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and even this move has been <clears> stressful, John, <throat> but. It'll pass. It always passes, dude. Or or you die, you know. Or you die, <laughs> which is going to happen anyway. Well, yeah, and it's such an ex ex is for existential, right? Yeah. I hope you didn't tune into the podcast today hoping for, <laughs> <clears throat> for some lighthearted laughs. Um, yeah, man. How do you – I'm always curious because, you know, our – I have not been around you. I mean, we do this every week. But I have not been around you as a father right. um, very right. often. But how do you mm -hmm. discuss all of this with with your child? I mean, are you? I mean, I I I assume you're just you as you are. Right. I'm just pretty much <clears throat> to the point with her. I'm like, but see, all of my kid is really easygoing, man. Like she misses her friends. She talks about that a lot with her mother. She wants to have play dates, and I'm always the one who's like, Nah, dude, not yet, not yet. And they'll have like little ones every not lately. Because mm -hmm. the numbers have gotten way worse here in Oregon. But um, they were doing, like, mask on outside play dates, you know, but, which is so fucking sad because they have to, like, stay far away from each other. It's a sad shit. But I mean, I talked to her about it a little bit. I mean, but when I do, I'm always straight to the point. I'm like, yo, this is going to pass. I know you miss your friends. We're going to be moving to Arizona. You're going to have two cousins you're going to be living in the same house with. You're going to be sick of children, believe me. Like, <laughs> it's going to be all right, dude. Like, I've never lived through anything like this in my life and neither of you. So we're going to do it together. You know, that's all yeah. we can really do is just do it together. I'm 45 years old. I've never lived through it. No one listened no to this. One. And I think I said that last time, listen to this podcast has ever lived through this, you know? No, I talked to my mom shit. and I was like, is there anything remotely close? Like there was, and she's like, absolutely not. Nothing that right. stopped right. everything like this. 
She's like, yeah, they used to hoard toilet paper back in the 70s. It was the thing they did with, like, there was a gas shortage. And gas so shortage, yes. Yeah. 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 But um, she's like, no, nothing like this. Nothing so like this. <clears throat> this is a whole different fucking thing. But that being said, we're all doing it at the same time. And and you know what? Mm-hmm. Some people will do it badly and some people will do it fucking awesome. And some people will do it both ways because I've done it badly and I've done it awesome. I've had tons mm-hmm. of emotional breakdowns. I've like sat in my garage, painted and it just started hysterically crying for no fucking reason because I just had to do it. Because I was like, oh, I got to let this pressure out and know that I, I can't, I don't even like people. I don't even really have friends, dude. So what? I'm like missing out on all the tea and cheese parties. No, fuck those people. I don't want to fucking hang out with those people. But still, I miss, I miss, I miss it. Of course, we all do in our own way. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes. Fucking, even the basement dudes. Well, and be careful with that cheese because it can cause gout if you eat too much cheese. I don't really eat that much cheese. Okay. I eat some all cheese, right. but not too much. But if you do eat too much cheese and you get the gout, get nettle gout. tea, nettle tea is the. Yeah, is, you said it earlier, and I thought, man, it must taste horrible. It's all right. It's not. Okay. You put a little honey in it if you want, or lemon, or you know, ginger. Yeah. But um, I just, <laughs> I just double bag it and then you know let it chill and steep it for like 10, 15 minutes, and then I right. pound it back. But um, like when you were drinking, you just double bag it and let it chill, dude. Yeah, exactly. It's just the medicine, man. You just got to get it in you. Gotta you know, that. that's the other thing. I was. It's so funny the shit that like that I deal with now because one of the other uh, treatments is to drink like cherry juice, right? And so I'm out there buying eight dollar jars of cherry juice that's like eight hundred calories for the whole thing. I don't drink that kind of sugar, but I'm <sighs> yeah. I need to get my fucking foot back in order. Foot back in order. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I guess sure I'll drink eight hundred calories in juice, which is just flat soda. Like, right. I don't know. I don't really fuck with the juice. I don't know about you if you have orange juice. Can you juice. just eat raw cherries? Will that you help can. too? can. They're not really in season around here. I mean, Oh, they're... you got to get the CJ. You got to get that cherry juice. Yeah. yeah. Not... So that's, just that's do a bunch that's... of uh, high intensity interval training. Just tons of fucking mountain climbers. Dude, I want to I wanna get burpees. excited about that shit. <laughs> I really would love there is that way. Nothing but, exciting about high intensity interval training. It fucking sucks, dude. It's the worst. I hate burpees with all of my heart. You know that dude who does burpees for recovery? Like that yeah. dude gets props because burpees are fucking whack, dude. Yeah, he did like a hundred a day for a year. Or yeah, something like that. I'm props to that dude because burpees are the most boringest shit. That's, ugh. Yeah, yeah, it's fucked up. Um. <laughs> so so yeah so and I I. I I kind of, I guess I had a little bit of a turning point as I'm reading these mm-hmm. books. Um, right. And there are two that I highly suggest for anybody who's interested. One in writing, um, uh, only because, and I was, somebody, somebody on Facebook had said something about their the alcoholic, um, about their, their mind racing and so many thoughts and so many thoughts and all this stuff. And I said, man, yeah. I suggested really go get a journal and start writing them down. And even if you just do a page a day, and I think their response was something like, oh, I'm not a good writer. And, um, and I'm like, getting graded. it's you're exactly, you're not getting graded. It's not about fucking spelling or grammar. And I, I feel like a lot of people have an aversion toward writing because it's seen like school and assignments mm-hmm. and, you know, we're not, we're not disciplined, structured people, generally speaking, as alcoholics. Right. And mm-hmm. so to push exactly. yourself to write a page a day seems like such a daunting task. <clears throat> but I can't begin to tell you how, I mean, I'm sure I've already done it, but how helpful it's been in my recovery and how it's like gone from, it was from one page to three pages to now I spend 30 minutes straight writing in my book. And that's yeah. seemed that would seem insane to me even like a month or so ago. Yeah. Like, man, I just need to get through these three pages, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And I'm really like, and this has been going on. I've been doing this for like three and a half or four years. It's finally just started to get to the point where I'm getting engrossed and actually just doing the writing. Even if it's, it's not about like I'm creating a piece or that it's to be yeah. read at all. It's just for you doing it for me. And the racing thoughts, right? It helps you mm-hmm. get the racing thoughts out instead of letting them bounce around in your head. Yeah. Um, so I think in those little acts, and also I think reading is really helpful. I don't yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm not here to, I'm not better than anybody else because I read a fucking book, you know? 
And I, I do have, you know, but that being said, I do have two that I'm reading right now, Jerry. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. Good for you. I just finished a book, but it was an audio book, but it still counts, though. Well, sure, sure. And, it and still so it counts. Th- audio books count. <clears throat> yes. I think that in those in those times that I'm reading, and I think that's where that sort of infinite wonder part of the existential dread comes in, is that I'm I'm kind of getting lost or I'm interested in another world, another person, another way of thinking mm-hmm. that was not mine. Because if I turn on the news, if I were to bring up the news on my phone right now, it would oh. bring me nothing but misery mm-hmm. and anger. And it's like, so I really have to just say no to that shit. Because there's so many big problems that I can't solve today. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then the other thing with the book, the other book about running is I highly suggest, you know, and I mean, I might, you know. How interesting is a book about running? I mean, it's interesting to you, but like, I, you tell me about all these books about running and I'm like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I, and I'm not trying to dog you or, or mm-hmm. it's just, it's all different interests, right? It's like right. my mom would read a book about baking and i'd be like man i can't fuck with that you know with running too it's like i guess it's all about this personal this person's so personal this one, experiences with his, stuff, his right? personal experience his life experience um doing these like 50 100 135 mile runs but also this one's also based around food so he gives you recipes and he's a oh okay he's a plant-based dude um and are you plant-based now you're fully plant-based aren't you you don't uh, need any meat there's 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 some eggs in the fridge. Yeah, you fuck with a little cheese because you can no, tell by I the don't. Toe. Yeah, no, I don't. That's that's what was so baffling to me is there's no cheese here. I don't. Maybe it's the nuts. Anyway, yeah, we'll get yeah. to that. We'll we'll and encyclopedia I've, brown that mystery later. But <laughs> I have removed the nuts, but it could have been that bag of fucking smart food popcorn or the salt intake. The sodium in it, yeah. Right. So that's what I'm thinking it was. Is it had something to do with salt because. I'm not going excess on anything, and I didn't think it was an excessive salt thing, but also don't eat a whole fucking bag of popcorn like that. So, Especially if you're not used to it. Especially if you're not used to it. Maybe I'm just overly sensitive because I'm... Anyhow. So, uh, yeah, I think they're interesting. The one that's really good is called Born to Run because it's this adventure of going to Mexico and meeting this whole other culture, and the, mm-hmm. they... They're these they just run in fucking Harachi sandals and shit. They're like smoking right. cigarettes and drinking Coca-Cola at the fucking starting line. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I gotta put that on Audible. Miles. I'll check that out. Yeah, I told you about one of the first times when we first moved into this house. We've been we've lived in this house for about 18 months, mm-hmm. which is a bummer that we gotta leave now. But when I first moved in this house, I found that trail and I was like, shit, why have I never run this trail? But I remember running down it one day heading south, and I hear all these heavy footsteps coming up towards me going north and this kid this 23 year old kid comes running right by me in a full jean jacket in like boots and he's throwing punches in the air like he's boxing like throwing crosses and he's got a cigarette dangling out of his mouth and he's fucking running and he looks at me and nods up like what's up and just continues to run down the trail with a fucking burning cigarette throwing punches in a jean jacket it was the weirdest shit i was like man i wish i were 23 (laughs) <laughs> you, know, you can just do that shit at 23 mm-hmm. but i can think of those mexican runners you know mm-hmm. who conditioned themselves so much and it's been part of their bloodline for so long that they're like yeah I'd smoke a couple of raleigh's and then fucking take a cruise you know basically yeah i mean because that's just part of their life it's not about mm-hmm. training for them they're like we it's run to funny. go here and we go and get food here and then we get the water over here and whatever and so so that that one's a great one as far as it being an adventure. So you know what? If if a book about running sounds fucking boring, then don't get that one. Like yeah, don't. A, you know. Yeah. And I just feel like I don't think there's anything wrong with. I love playing video games. We played games the other night, mm-hmm. watching movies and TV and YouTube. Although I really am feeling more and more like my YouTube page is trash because I just it's the algorithm has got me. I just am not finding I used to find interesting different stuff that I didn't know existed and now it's like the same 12 people do you know what I mean it's all commercials yeah and if you watch one thing about politics and the whole thing's all politics or if you watch one thing where they talk about movies and everything yeah so, yeah they, they need to tweak that shit so they've made just, some changes in the past few months where I'm like ugh. so I don't want to be somebody's like fucking you know grumpy dad telling them to go read a book but it's it has really shifted 
those are the moments where I feel more like, oh, wow, what a cool different world to be right. in. Right. Well, and you're just, you're learning shit. You really are. Yeah. You're learning about reading them books there, John. You're learning some stuff. <laughs> so I, I don't want to judge anybody for doing anything else with their time, especially ah. if you're stuck in fucking quarantine and you don't want to deal with shit. And like, I get it, man. Like, ah, dude, you got to go out and work your fucking essential job or it sucks and you're covered. You got to wear a mask six hours a day and whatever the fuck. Whatever it is for your, what did you call it? Your what? Your bliss? No, what was the word you used? My infinite wonder, Jerry. Infinite wonder. I don't know where bliss came from. Like it's a chocolate ad or something. Uh But maybe that's where the infinite wonder comes from. It's just those moments where you relax, where you're inert. Like I said, inert. Yeah, you're just like, I don't feel bad or good. I'm just in the moment. I'm just here. Here's where I am. Cool. Mm. Maybe that's the infinite wonder of it all is that our body can finally rest at one point. Our brain can rest, you know, Mm -hmm. you just, yeah. And some people do it through meditation. Some do it through reading. I do it through reading and running and working out and playing Far Cry. Mm -hmm. What's the new Far Cry? Is that not It's not out yet. That's out in February. But the one I'm playing now is called New Dawn, which came out about a year ago. Okay. But it was on sale for 11 bucks on the PlayStation store. So it was all yoinks. And I love it. I just, I, I fucking snipe outposts. I just sit up and shoot people from, you know, 400 meters away, and it feels good. You send you your – whoa. I was going to say, do you send your dog out there like they have the little buddy in front? I do of- have a buddy. His name is Timber. Timber? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I have a little buddy, and I got my little dog in here barking at God knows what's going on out there. Maybe somebody – Ghosts. How dare someone walk by the front of the house, <laughs> usually. Um. So yeah, man, I just I feel I just was thinking about this because it's been a rough like few days, and I I bet it has and, been, yeah. And objectively, like if you were to look at my life on paper for the last few days, not that bad. I go to work, I make money, I eat some food, I sleep, you know, my fucking foot hurts, but like who doesn't have some pain that they don't deal with, right? Like, mm-hmm. so I mean, it was nice to read it in a book that like, oh, maybe this isn't as important as I'm making it out to be. Right. Well, so it is to you in the moment, right? It's the moment. It's perspective. It's perspective. But it hurts today. And I'm like, well, whatever. That's just that's just that little part of me. I'm like grateful that I have the pain because I know the pain is a gift that tells me that I need to take care of myself. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I know these I don't <clears throat> I don't. I espouse these little things, right? That sounds mm-hmm. that sounds deep and meaningful. And I got that from from a nurse, from an old older woman, uh, about the pain being a gift. But like, and I don't always feel that way about it because I I get fucking fussy and cranky and whiny and childish, and I'm just like, I don't want to fucking hurt anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah. But like today, I'm like, okay, so just don't let it ruin everything. Right. Stop I, ruining everything, John. That's what I this just, idea, though, that we're not allowed to express our dissatisfaction in an appropriate way, you know? It's okay. It's okay to be a whiny, cranky, whiny and cranky about it. Just don't let it overwhelm you, and don't be like that all the fucking time. It's just like we were talking about your person at work who was like, well, it's so cold in here, and you're like, yo, you're allowed to be a crybaby about this shit, but then you need to fucking accept it, because it is fucking cold in here. I'm not in charge of the weather. If I'm in charge of the weather, I would not be doing this. I'd be doing cool weather shit, you know? Like, it's just like you're sitting there, you're like, fuck, my leg hurts. This sucks. It's cool. Own it. And then you got to be like, well, fuck, what can I do? You know, sitting over here being like, I got to move all my stuff and coronavirus and I got to go, you know, how am I going to get my shit in the truck? And, and then I have to be like, well, it either gets in. Ideally, it should get in. So mm-hmm. we got to do it. And co- COVID's not going anywhere, Jerry. So you just have to fucking be careful and just hope to the fucking bear you don't get it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And if I do get it, well, it'll help it's manageable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If I do it get is- it, I hope it's manageable. Right. And at I'm- this point, like, you're, oh, it's okay. To- but we just live in a culture where they, you, you get, especially being men, we get shit talked for like complaining about shit you know, for mm-hmm. like showing pain or showing weakness or showing, you know, and I, I, I hate that shit. I'm like, you know what, own it for a minute and then we'll go, go get dim sum or something. Right. I don't, I just don't <laughs> want it. It was just, oh, it was overwhelming me. And I'm like, yes, I can't mm-hmm. let it overwhelm me. I can't, I just, I can't, I have to figure out a fucking way to be on the other side of it because mm-hmm. the yeah. existential dread, the fear and uncertainty and death is, is always there. Right. We're yeah. going to die. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's going to be a time somewhere in the future, Jerry, where somebody's listening to this podcast. And I just want to say, 
from the past or right. I'm from the dead back from, Ooh, you know <laughs> you put your pants on <laughs> except for you you leave your pants off exactly that's yeah, I'm like a horny ghost <laughs> yeah. I'm a horny ghost yeah I'm just in the corner like I like your bra mm-hmm, that's right so a hundred years from now this will be mm-hmm. floating in some digital space somewhere like that I hope so big. I really hope so um but I just was I just kind of got tired of my own shit yeah. I guess is what happened I, I hear you days. I hear you um and so it was like okay well what do you want and I was like I want and it, I feel and it's funny as a man I feel I feel silly going like, I want to feel joy and I want to feel happiness. And I was like, that idea of wonder. And it came from, there was, I had a conversation with our friend Tycho one time Mm -hmm. many years ago. And she, she said this about me, like, this has got to be like 15 years ago at this point. I don't fucking know. And we were talking about like, we were walking around downtown Seattle or something like that. And she said, you know, John, you often have this, like she said, like this childlike wonder about you that I really like or appreciate or something like that. Like you, you look up, you don't just look straight ahead in the city. You look up at buildings or something like yeah. that. And maybe I'm, I don't want to, I may be romanticizing this conversation a little bit because it's in my head and that's how I remember it from 15 years ago, most of which were drunk. We both might've been drunk. Right. So, <laughs> you were, you definitely were. <laughs> but it kind of struck me and I was like, oh. I like that. I didn't realize that about myself. And so that was kind of the thing that sparked this whole idea about infinite wonder and if it was mm-hmm. possible and why isn't it possible we used to, didn't we used to engross ourselves in projects, art projects or writing projects or doing fun things. Didn't we used to try to build trebuchets? Well, that was Walter and Coda, but right. <laughs> or whatever it was, make movies or do there were things that we did in our lives that did not require the internet or knowing what was going on across around the world. Right. And we had fun and we had a good day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So dude, I remember you, if we're going to talk about the, the mm-hmm. childlike wonder of John and it God. immediately sprung to my mind in Seattle was when you got tickets to go to Cirque du Soleil and you got <laughs> drunk at Cirque du Soleil and then you started, mm-hmm. and then we all got drunk together after Cirque du Soleil and you were telling us this story about how like it was a little person on a trampeze and you like push them away with your fingertips or something They like swung up to you. This is what you were saying. They swung up to you mm-hmm. and you like push them away with just your fingertips. And you were like, and it floated off like a little bubble it and you did. were just like so fucking stoked about it. And me and Coda, <laughs> Megan, my wife was just like really like engrossed in the story. And Coda and I are just rolling our eyes at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? And you're like, Oh, they just floated away like a little bubble. I just boop pushed them away. It was so fucking funny. It was just like, yeah, I can see where Tycho's coming from with that. That's absolutely right. So, uh, yes, I remember that day, and I remember mm-hmm. the gin tent. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was sponsored by Bombay Sapphire, and we were just like, <laughs> gin we were tent. trying to do shots of gin because we were going to have to sit for an hour and a half mm-hmm. for the show. Who are you with? I you weren't with Trish. Oh, okay. And um. And so we were like, I was just pounding back warm gin. Like, I didn't fucking care. I just needed to catch that buzz. And then, but I do remember that. And like the little person in the, in like the bubble would come over and I don't know how they had it all set up. And yeah, it was, that was the, and it went away. And I was like, (laughs) I don't know. So, Uh, so maybe it seems silly and that's okay. And maybe it seems goofy and I guess that's okay too. And I'm just kind of. I'm over it judging myself because I want to feel like having fun again. Yeah. And that, by that, I don't mean, um, I don't know what I don't mean, but I don't, I just want to have fun again. And it doesn't have to be something big and exciting. And you know what? Like I, I I'll, everything comes with this like mitigated risk mm-hmm. of contracting disease, but there are still some things that I can do. Right. So I don't really, I don't know what I was doing before. Well, it wasn't. I mean, most of it was like outdoor stuff, which is still on the table. Right. Um, yeah, you were just before COVID, you were still running. You were training for marathons and you were running, really. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was, and then, you know, hanging around with um, um, mm. Nabil and that was mm-hmm. really, and working, that was all you're doing and working yeah. on your recovery and then doing stuff yeah. for this. So, I mean, whatever it is, right? I, right. I think 
I used to miss, I do miss like things like I would go into like Ross dress for less and like yeah. find like some running gear for super cheap. Right. Yeah. That was, that was fun that to too. me. Mm-hmm. Or I would just pop into a place and get a bowl of noodles by myself out there somewhere after I had run. Yeah. In some I miss weird that park. Too. So, mm-hmm. So there are things that like those kind of afternoons by myself I really miss. And I don't know that I'm I'm just not that into Ross Dress for Less to go in there right now with a fucking mask on and like do you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. on the priority list. You will be able to soon though. I mean yeah. what's like you said, what's nine more months? If if it's that even. <laughs> yeah, you know? it really where you just roll into Ross with a mask and know, yo, I fucking took a vaccine and I'm immune, so I could. I mean, I could go right now if I really wanted to. Yeah. But I'm yeah. not. Yeah. You're like, oh, I made your decision for you because I'm like, I wouldn't go. If yeah. Megan were like, yo, let's go to Ross. I'll get you some cool shit. I'd be like, nah. <laughs> How about we just get some cool shit on Amazon if you're if you're if you're buying. Right. And so I get just some jelly bracelets or something. Mm-hmm. I'm not that. I'm not that. Uh, I'm not that pumped for that particular thing. And so yeah. it's like it's gonna be okay, and I'll, I'll get back to that, and I'll be able to have those weird little adventures. That's what it was too. Is that I I missed adventure, Jerry. And even mm-hmm. if it was like contained and safe, and like just going out into the world and being somewhere I'd never been before, even if that was a fucking shopping center in a different town. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, that seems silly, but like, that was something that I enjoyed that I don't do anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'll get back there. So, we'll get back there. In the meantime, just go out in the woods with just like nothing. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, just go for night walks. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Don't in go the for woods. night walks. No. Not in the woods. I mean, well, not on not, the street either, I imagine. But yeah, I mean, you want to be careful, but uh, you can go out at night, I think. But well, and actually, not in California. We have a curfew. There's all, it's a, it's a mess down here, man. Ah, oh, serial killers. Uh, <laughs> are there any more? Are they? I mean, they're I feel... around. We just don't know about them. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, probably. I listen to so much true crime podcasts. I'd be more worried about less worried about the cougars and more worried about like some fucking weird dude that still lives with his mom who's driving around cutting off heads, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, yeah, I guess there are a lot of cougars though in Sonoma, huh? Not the cougar, not wine cougars. Like not actually, wine cougars. Yeah, yeah. like there are cats. mountain lions. They do have signs that say that. Mostly though, mountain lions are not interested in being around you <clears throat> at all. They probably taste bad and so much work. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, yeah, they don't want it. They're not interested in. They don't. It's the the risk of of the of us as prey is too big. They're not. They're just not interested. But they say like. You know, a good thing make noise. So if I know that like I'm out there and I've been, it's really quiet. I'll make some noise or I'll sing to myself or I'll grab a stick and kind of tap things just to like, I'm coming down the road, mm-hmm. trying to loosen my load. You I know, said they're singing the Eagles. They just yes, get bawled by a lion while you're singing the Eagles. <clears throat> um, but yeah, man. So I'm just like trying to find the other part of that. That because the existential dread is is here and we're mm-hmm. living in it and it's well I I love this concept though I appreciate you bringing it up this way because all I have been feel all I've been focusing on is the existential dread you know what I mean like it really has been my focus I haven't been experiencing it the entire time but I've been definitely focused on trying to alleviate it or what it is or looking at it or listening to podcasts about it you know so. Mm-hmm. To think of the other one, which I keep wanting to think of as irresistible bliss, which is not. <laughs> that's that's um that's, that's a soul coffee album. Is that soul coffee? But the, you know, instead of looking at the positive aspect of it, which is great, I'm glad you brought it up as a subject because now I can tell Megan, oh, we talked about positivity today. Positivity. I really wasn't. This was not my plan originally. I mean, I didn't know. I was just trying to fi- again that idea of like letting it go, giving mm-hmm. it away. Mm. I was just trying to fucking think of a different way, and it was not. I mean, it's, I'm sure I, I, I'm not going to read you my journal from the last few days, but it was not great, Jerry. No, it's probably. <laughs> I could tell on your Instagram where you're like, I feel a little discontented, and I'm like, oh, John's probably not doing too good. Yeah. yeah. Um. Drop him a line. Send him a meme. Let's send yeah. John a meme. That'll always. I always love a good meme. Who doesn't love a good meme? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I get annoyed sometimes. I'm like, enough with the fucking memes. But mm-hmm. then it, I always laugh at them, so I don't know why I'm a because my phone will buzz, and I'm like, how dare my phone buzz? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I always I'm very hesitant these days. Whenever I see one that's like, 
some tattoo meme and I'm like, I don't need to fucking share this with Jerry. He's probably I, already seen it or I've probably already seen it. But it but sometimes he sent it to me though and I'm like, you know what, John is right. It do be like that sometimes. It, <laughs> it do be like that, you know, like <clears throat> um know. but yeah, man, I just uh if I have to if I have to live like this, if there's gonna be if there's gonna be uncertainty and fear, I, I really I'm going to try and balance that with other things and really not, not look at, you know, I think it's, it's so easy to go like, Oh, infinite wonder. That sounds so fucking frivolous. It and we, does. Don't have, we don't have time for that. And uh-huh. we don't, we don't have the money for that. And you have got to pay attention and you've got to focus and we've got to get through this and you better be careful. And I'm like, well, okay. I've been doing that for nine months right? and I'm still going to do that today. Yeah. And I'm going to do that probably for another nine months. Yeah. dude. So why can't I balance it with something else? I mean, I can do things safely and there's all kinds of I'm just I'm just really going to try and be more creative and allow myself to be freely creative in those ways. And, you know, whatever it is whether it be artwork or whether it be driving somewhere else to go to a different park to go run in the outdoors yeah know? like you go beaches aren't closed you can always go on a nice right. beach walk and you're not that far from the from the water about an hour about yeah so nice, that's nice that's beach something walk. as long as i'm being safe right as long as yeah, i'm not as long like, as you're being socially distant wearing a mask you shouldn't have a mm-hmm. problem you know yeah so i think that that's i think that it's acceptable to find those creative ways to be excited and happy and free again and I don't really care if it sounds frivolous to anybody else. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? No, like, who fucking I've gotten cares? over it. Yeah, exactly. I'm tired. Yeah. It's been nine months and I'm fucking tired and it's been a hell of a year. And um, I know that this doesn't change, like I said, with the flip of a calendar page, but um. <clears throat> I'm just ready to try something different. And I wasn't before. So, bam. That's where you should just end it. I'm ready to try something different. <laughs> Be the little fucking star of the rainbow behind <laughs> That's the more you know. The more you know. That would be more of a star wipe. Dun, dun. Um, but yeah, man. <laughs> Wait, and, was that the Mac turn off? You just sang the Mac turn off. When you turn off your Mac, dun, it goes dun dun dun. dun, dun. dun. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> As you uh, Intel you inside. Dun, 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 dun. That's what it is. It's not the Mac song. Um, Return of the Mac. That's the Mac song. That's a fucking cut right there. <clears throat> That's going to be a kitchen dancing cut. I'm going to put that in my mix, dude. I put it on my running mix so I can kind of have like the... Dun, 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 Did you dun. know that Andrew Bird apparently does all these fucking performances on his YouTube channel? And I can't find it, but I was reading on the AV Club that he did. He performed the whole Mysterious Production of Eggs album on his no, channel. I which did. is my favorite Andrew Bird album. I but put anyway, it up there. yeah. Yo, if that brings you joy, y'all should check out Andrew Bird. He was on Fargo, too. He's pretty good on that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. He plays the... A mortician. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. And, you know, all this, all the digital stuff and all the online stuff, and I know it can be exhausting, and I know that, like, staring at screens and things like that, and it's, it's, it's easy. It's easy to get fed up for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like, instead of getting to the point of being fed up, I think it's... For me, it's like, well, let's just take a break. Let's not do that. I let's... tried to let it branch into other things, right? To be a spark, like to spark me to be inspired to do something else. So I've been watching these Ben Fold concerts in his little apartment. They're pretty good. And uh, they get boring after a while. I'll watch like 10, 15 minutes. You can only watch a guy sit there and play piano alone for so long. But then My it'll princess? turn into, it's Ben Folds. He does ben these Folds. little okay. concerts. Yeah, Ben Folds does on his okay. YouTube channel. He does a little live concert from his apartment. So then that turned into me listening to the whatever and ever amen while taking apart my bed, right? And the only song I ever skip on that album is Brick because I don't like that song. Mm-hmm. But it's a great fucking album. And then in time, while I'm listening to it, I'm, I'm feeling a little joy because I'm remembering being a dude in my 20s. And this album was like gospel to me. Awesome. You know what yeah. I mean? Like all the concepts of it. And then getting up and singing and dancing to it, you know, and my daughter comes in and she's like, whoa, what are you fucking vibing to? And I'm like, I'm vibing <laughs> to fucking adult contemporary music, Olive. Get down. 
Give me back like, my black T-shirt. Yeah, this is my generation's answer to fucking Elton John. Let's get weird, you know? Like, yeah. But, mm-hmm. I mean, those things all branch off. I try to use my media as inspiration to other things that I can consume that aren't just me sitting down in front of a screen, you know? Yeah. But yeah. if you want to sit in front of a screen and that brings you your fucking happiness, then do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Just everything within moderation, right? Isn't that what this whole podcast is about? Well, no, this whole podcast is about abstinence <laughs> from alcohol. But ice cream in moderation. <laughs> yes. Video games ice cream in moderation. <laughs> Diet Cokes and Coke Zeros in moderation, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I, I just, um, you know, if anybody is looking for other things, uh, my reading and writing and listening to music and, like you <laughs> said, even finding – you're taking apart a bed because you're uh, you're moving. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think, you know, maybe you're fed up with doing things around the house. I don't know. But – Finding something new and looking at just even looking at the old things differently. And arrange your room. I sounds uh, now we're giving suggestions like my mom would do. <laughs> Are you depressed? Go on a walk. You know, I hate when I I hate it when yeah. people give me suggestions. But those are yeah. things I like to do. I do mm-hmm. like to rearrange rooms and play games and go outside and shit. Just drink a cup of coffee outside, look around. Mm-hmm. It's a Be like, it's my neighborhood. There's that crazy lady walking her dog for the fifth time today. What the fuck is her deal? Seriously. Yeah, dude. She what, her deal? what kind of dog is it? She's an anxious lady, a little dog. It's a little furry gray dog. It's like a tiny Coco. You know what I like to do yeah. is I like, you ever like write stories in your head about strangers on the street? Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's my jam. Yeah, but they're always turned into like creepy sex stories. So I kind of, <laughs> kind of curve it off. I'm like, yo, know, that lady likes to wear a fucking captain's outfit and walk around the house. You know, like, I'm like, yo, see that guy right there, the Trump sticker? He likes to get peed on. <laughs> making up like why because he has a trump sticker i'm like nah he just has that look on his face he can yeah have a just... biden sticker and like get peed on he just looks like a dude is into that and if he is cool good for him as long as everything's voluntary right yeah. consensual consensual that's the word voluntary voluntary too yeah. um both of those things are important yeah. but uh, yeah everybody well, thank you enjoy yeah. that one yeah Thank you for listening to me and my strange thoughts jerry yeah Sometimes. that's okay man you gotta get it out if if, if i yeah you got to get it out. I'm glad you got at least once a week to express it to me while I sit in this empty room full of echoes. And... <laughs> I know. It's... For those of you not watching this on YouTube, you're really missing out. Um, it's just, it just looks, you look like, I don't know, like you're being locked in there or something? I look like, or... No, I look like I'm <laughs> squatting in this house. <laughs> um, well, cool, man. Well, I hope you, uh, everybody out there, you find something new. Or different mm-hmm. today, or a different perspective, and um, we'll do it again next week. Jerry's going to be moving to Arizona soon, and I don't know what the next. I know we got next week, and then the week after that, I have no idea how the podcast we'll is going to come out. out. Yeah, but we'll um, right on, man. All right, I'll see you next time. See you later. Bye. Right. Thanks again for listening. Our music, as always, is by Neglect. You can find more of his stuff at neglect.bandcamp.com. And you can find us on all social media platforms that matter, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can reach us at aisforalcoholic at gmail.com. Talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs>